to look at in this film is a very important question. Does innovation matter? And if so, why? Well, to help us answer that question, let's ask this gentleman here first of all. This is, of course, Charles Darwin, the famous biologist, and he's famous for saying in his theory that it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It's the one that's most adaptable to change. And that, of course, is the story for organisations today. It's about adapting to change, innovating successfully. Trouble is, it's a tricky environment. These days, it's very much like the world of Alice through the looking glass. You might remember the famous scene with the Red Queen, where Alice and the Queen have been running like mad for so long, and they pause for a moment, gasping for breath. And Alice complains because she thinks, if you run that far and that fast, you must get somewhere. To which the Queen replies, ha, huh, it's a slow sort of country. Here, you see, it takes all the running you can do just to keep in the same place. If you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast as that. So there's a kind of powerful imperative for innovation running through these pictures. We need to change because we're in a changing world. Now, we've known this, and indeed that's helped us as species survive. We don't have to look far back before we realise the huge role which innovations played. Think about the wheel, one of those famous Stone Age examples, but it helped us achieve a lot. Fire, with all that that meant in terms of being able to feed ourselves and then later on to process metals. Tools, of course, of all shapes and sizes helped us build things. And later on in our evolution, we learned to communicate. Gutenberg's printing press was a huge revolution for its time. We've talked a lot already about healthcare, and that's clearly one of the other benefits as a species from innovation. And we could carry on, but it really underlines the fact that, as a species, we've survived and grown through innovation. Now, if we take the big picture, trying to look at answers to our question, well, very many economists have looked at the question of innovation, and they all, of course, argue, but they've come towards more or less the same conclusion. Innovation is a powerful force behind economic growth. This man's a good example, a famous man called William Baumol, who concluded in his studies in the 1990s that virtually all of the economic growth that's occurred since the 18th century is ultimately attributable to innovation. Um, you can go back to Karl Marx, who was an oh, interesting economist. He believed that innovation was the locomotive of economic growth. But perhaps this man really made the closest and most detailed study. He later on became the finance minister for Austria, but Joseph Schumpeter was an important economist, and he basically built a theory seeing entrepreneurs as the driving force in the economy, the ones who make change happen, enable growth. And in particular, he talked about a concept called creative destruction. They not only try to create things, they try to move things forward, to destroy what's gone before, to put something better in its place. So this powerful engine for economic growth. And of course, it's not just direct economic growth, expansion of the economy. Think about the impacts that this all has on employment. And in turn, what that means for social welfare. All those businesses paying their taxes mean we can have schools and hospitals and fire services and ambulances. And if we think about the wider world of social innovation, the idea of building a more sustainable planet or a more equal society, these are things which are also consequences of innovation. And indeed, social innovation does change the world. Think about healthcare. Way, way back in the 18th century, a man called John Coram decided it was important to have a hospital for the children found on the streets. And his innovation was the Foundling Hospital, which you can still find in London today. One of the breakthrough innovations in terms of the UK was the National Health Service, created 70 years ago as a means of providing health care for anyone that needed it. This same concept has been behind the idea of Médecins Sans Frontières, taking this to emergency situations and trying to provide health care. And the out-of-end eye care system, essentially a very much entrepreneur-driven social innovation, trying to provide sight for people who would otherwise go blind through cataract problems. And something like 12 million people today can see as a result of this innovation. But of course, it's not just at the big picture level. Innovation also changes the way sectors rise and fall. Think about lighting. 
In the old days, we used to burn animal fats and make them into candles. And then someone came up with the idea of the oil lamp and later on the gas lamp. Still later, Thomas Edison came across with his electric light bulb. So did Joseph Swan. They argue about who came first. Doesn't matter. Their inventions became innovations which changed the world. But these days, light emitting diodes, LEDs, are the future of lighting. And in each of these transitions which have taken place, there's been a huge expansion of businesses and consumer applications. So these are major sectoral changes. Same thing if we look at the music industry. Thomas Edison's famous gramophone, one of his many, many inventions, gave us a world where we had our music available on various kinds of gramophone record. Later on, thanks to an invention by Philips, we had the cassette, the compact cassette. And many of us have collections still of music laboriously put onto cassette. Then came compact discs, and then something of a revolution, the idea of the MP3 player, and putting music into software, which in turn triggered a surprising consequence, the idea of music piracy, where people were sharing with each other the music they wanted and not paying the royalties. And then Apple came along. Apple, a computer company, not a music company, but came along with the iPod. And the iPod, apart from being a very elegant design, which had enormous attraction for the wide consumer market, also Apple arranged the various royalty deals so that they could provide legally the kind of music that people wanted to download. But then there's a question, do we need to own that music at all? And so streaming services like Spotify are once again upending the music industry. Now they're just examples but they show again the powerful role which innovation plays at a sector level. But of course it's the same story with the level of the firm, the enterprise. Essentially there's an innovation imperative. If we don't change what we offer the world and the ways we create and deliver that, we may, may not be around for long. So that's the logic that's behind the growing and the creating of new businesses and indeed of social ventures. For example, Amancio Ortega, back in 1974, had an idea for making clothes in Western Spain. Those ideas and his hard work innovating to build uh, a textile empire have eventually led to an organization called Inditex, one of whose brands is Zara, the famous clothes store. The two gentlemen in the corner, Procter and Gamble, essentially set up household goods, originally candles and soaps, and now hundreds of thousands of innovations essentially offered through Procter and Gamble's growing company. Jeff Bezos had an idea for book selling online, which spawned so many other activities that now constitute the Amazon empire. And Jack Ma, the same thing, moving from the online platform to creating a whole world around the Alibaba idea over in China. And the Aravind system, as I already mentioned, essentially trying to take eye care to people who couldn't afford it. All of these at the sector level and at the firm level are examples of radical innovation. But it isn't always a good story. For, there may be organisations which expand and grow, but there are others which fail to innovate or fail to innovate fast enough who decline. The tragic story of Kodak, still in Chapter 11 bankruptcy, still not dead yet, but nothing like the kind of organisation which dominated the 20th century in terms of the imaging industry. Or Sears. For years, one of the key names in retailing and now in serious trouble and again in Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Pan Am, one of many, many airlines which were big names in the early part of the 20th century, built the airline industry after the war, but weren't able to innovate fast enough to stay with it. And Nokia, a humble timber products company which blossomed hugely into the mobile phone world and then declined. Not dead yet, still very active in mobile phone networks, but in terms of being a mobile phone manufacturer, almost disappeared. So there's a downside as well as an upside to this innovation challenge at the level of the firm. It's certainly important. And of course, at the individual level, it's also important. One of the key things about human beings is that creativity comes fitted as standard equipment. Everybody is creative. Everyone's capable of open-ended problem solving. And psychologists have argued that this is one of the key breakthroughs in our evolution as a species. 
When we could imagine how other people thought and then begin to put ourselves in their place, we could begin to cooperate and build societies and then develop the various innovations we've already seen. So imagination is a hugely important human skill and deploying it is what's kept us alive and helped us grow as a species. But there's another angle as well, which is that there's something about making a difference which motivates us. We want to have an impact on our world. Most entrepreneurs, when they're studied, actually talk not so much about the money they make as the impact they have. And certainly that's true of social entrepreneurs. So there's a motivational side to all of this, a big impact in terms of why innovate? Because it makes a difference. So, to answer our question, does innovation matter? Oh yes, very much at very many different levels. At the widest level, it has a huge impact on economic growth and through that employment, living standards and so on. At the sector level, it shapes the rise and fall of sectors with their accompanying winners and losers. At the enterprise level, it's all about survival and growth or decline. And at the individual level, it's part of human motivation. It's an entrepreneurial urge. So, if it's so important, it's probably worth understanding how innovation happens and the skills we might need to work with it.